ITV1 and Classic FM present Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. Hello, I'm Lisa Duncan. Now, if you mention Jane Austen to most people, what kind of reaction do you get? Corsets, big frocks and heaving bosoms. Style, class, elegance, romance. Leafy trees, usually summertime, horses, bath kind of Georgian architecture, kind of the sound of like crunching gravel, kind of people dressed in costumes. It just sort of seemed, things seem sort of proper and right. It makes me think of the 1800s, social attitudes, controversy, narrow-mindedness, hier- social hierarchies, fancy hairdos and underskirts and <laughs> bloomers. <laughs> Romance, elegance, old-fashioned femininity, a just kind of general sophisticated poise, I think, for women. Guys who are very kind of refined, but at the same time very manly. Dream world. <laughs> Heaving bosoms and galloping horses. Absolutely love the male protagonists. They're broody, they're oozing testosterone, they're hot. Makes me think of very uptight, arrogant men in very frilly shirts. Some views on the work of classic British author Jane Austen. So, here's your chance to get inside ITV1's Jane Austen season, starting with Mansfield Park, which is broadcast on Sunday, the 18th of March. We should no doubt prepare ourselves for an ignorant child with vulgar manners. But these are not incurable faults. I trust you approve a well-disposed girl with more sense than our poor dear sister. Our sister has enough sense to send her daughter to us. Being with her cousins will be an education in itself. I only hope she'll not tease poor Pug. Okay, first let's hear from actress Billy Piper about her character, Fanny Price. Fanny Price is the young cousin of the Bertram family and she's been sent from Portsmouth from her poor family to go and live with her rich part of the family. And it's the, the entire story is really about unrequited love and the fact that she falls desperately in love with Edmund, who's really her, um, the only person in the family that she confides in. It's about her suffering, the fact that he's kind of fallen for Mary Crawford and that she doesn't think it's a good match for him and that she should be with him and that she's the ideal cat. I thought Aunt Norris was never going to let me out. How did you go to work? I told her I had a very tedious errand in front of my cousin. (laughs) She's a lovely woman. She's a curious being. She's, um... She's very compassionate and uh, and very good to the family, and the family rely on her quite a lot. Certainly Sir Thomas and Lady Bertram. I think she's a better family member than their real children. In my innocence, I imagined I would be happy always. Then with the sudden brilliance of lightning, fresh from the pleasures of London's fashionable society, Mary Crawford and her brother Henry arrived in our lives. Life at Mansfield Park would never be the same again. Billy Piper, who plays Fanny Price, who's an all-round good egg. But is it easier for an actress to play a goodie or a villain? I think it's harder to play a villain than it is to play a goodie. Because with a villain, you have to find some redeeming quality that explains why they behave in the way that they do. Whereas with a goodie, it's, you know, if you're good, you're good. And uh, and Fanny definitely is a good a good girl and it's nice it's peaceful playing those parts it's good for the soul it doesn't mess your head up too much Mansfield Park like its sister shows Northanger Abbey and Persuasion features a galaxy of stars James Darcy as Tom Bertram Michelle Ryan as Maria Bertram Maggie O'Neill as Mrs Norris Gemma Redgrave as Lady Bertram Joseph Beatty as Henry Crawford and Blake Ritson who plays love interest Edmund Bertram. Blake's a hoot, actually. Um, he really is a funny boy. He, sh- he It's like he's born for period drama, Blake. Although, obviously, he's got many strings to his bows. He's a lovely guy and perfect for the part of Edmund. We had a good laugh. It works really well. It's, I think it has ni- we have nice chemistry. We certainly get on great. I've had a letter from my brother, Tom. He's staying on in town. It's just what my father was afraid of. Tom's whole life has turned into one long party. I'm left to deal with everything. Oh, I think it suits you very well. Besides, it's not all work. And I know this doesn't count. I was never happier. Uh, my name's Blake Ritson, and I play Edmund Bertram, who's the youngest son of the uh, Bertram family. Right at the top of the, the film, 
I'm kind of thrust into this position of great responsibility where I have to run the whole household. My father's off in Antigua. Uh, my brother, who's a bit of a ne'er-do-well, is off gambling in London. And then into this, Mary Crawford and Henry Crawford kind of waltz in. And Mary Crawford is this extraordinary kind of glamorous, quixotic creature. And I fall head over heels in love with her. And I suppose that's the start of my story, is this kind of love triangle where Fanny Price, played by Billy Piper, is in love with me. Um, and I'm in love with Mary and completely oblivious to the fact that she loves me. And it all kind of spirals out from there. In such a night as this, when the sweet wind did gently kiss the trees... And they did make no noise. In such a night, Troilus, methinks, mounted the Trojan walls and sighed his soul towards the Grecian tents where Cressid lay that night. Oh, so very well read, really. It was like being at a play, was it not, Sir Thomas? Indeed, the play must be a favourite of yours. Well, after tonight, sir, it will be. But to tell the truth, I like an audience. <laughs> The challenge of, of Edmund Bertram is, if you look at the book, there are, there are passages, I think, where there's a danger of him being slightly uh, pious or sanctimonious. And I think uh, Maggie Wadley, Wady, who did the, uh, the screenplay, did a great job already of kind of purging the worst excesses of self-righteousness. But I suppose the way I looked at it was that rather than him being a character who just happens to have a naturally moral high ground, that he's a character who's really struggling to keep this position of a moral high ground when actually he doesn't want it at all. He'd, he'd much rather be a rake. He'd much rather just have fun. So I really, I suppose, try to latch on to the, to the challenges and the struggle. I think perhaps compared to the book, he's probably a little more flirty and mischievous, which again is, is fun to play. But I think, you know, as an actor, it's always great fun playing a, a character who has these huge blind spots. It's that's that's what's exciting people's kind of imperfections and flaws and rough edges. And I think Edmund is about as flawed as anyone, really. Susan Harrison is the producer of Mansfield Park, and she's been telling us why she cast so many young actors. The style and language of the piece of um, Mansfield Park is dictated really by the youth of its characters. They are very young and their particular follies, Edmund's blindness to the fact that Fanny loves him and his inability to see that he really loves her, her naivete about the advances of Henry Crawford and Mary Crawford, all of them are only really explicable by their extreme youth. And so that's why we thought it very important to cast really young actors. In fact, they are not actually the 19, 18, 19 that they would have been, but they are, you know, in the case of Billy, 23, when she made it, and Blake was 24, I think. So they are incredibly young. And with that, stylistically, it asked for an energy from the camera and from, you know, the look of the piece. So we let Billy's hair fall, we kept the clothes comfortable... We let them run if they wanted to run, because I'm sure they did run then. Just because people look like models in the, the drawings that they make of their clothes didn't mean so they didn't behave like real people. And the actual camera work was almost entirely handheld, but not in that aggressively wobbly and, and often quite distancing way, quite alienating way. It was just in order to be try and be intimate. It was about intimacy. It was about following those characters, about getting their their extraordinarily youthful and naive eye views on the world. Um, something like persuasion is a much more sophisticated intelligence goes into that. It's both its protagonists are older. In ours, they're much younger, they're much more naive. And it, the camera scampers about. And I don't think it's at all disconcerting, but I think it, it, it does it because that's what they do, they run. This is where we shall begin with the Bertrams. A county with such a house in it cannot be all deadly dull. That will depend on the deadliness of its occupants. There are four children. Oh, no children, please. Or all now grown up and highly eligible. There is a younger son, but for myself, I have chosen the elder. The heir. You always do. And what about the casting of the villain of the piece, Henry Crawford? You have to believe with Henry that he actually has fallen in love with Fanny and does believe he could be redeemed, even though he's too weak to carry his redemption by himself. And um, I thought Joe gave a very sympathetic performance. Joe Beatty gave a very sympathetic performance of Henry. A bit of a, you know, bastard, but, you know, not, <laughs> you know, but not, you could sort of understand why. And similarly, Hayley Atwell was um, an evil but incredibly attractive Mary. 
So when Joseph Beatty was playing the baddie Henry Crawford, how did he perceive his character? I, I kind of, I think I th- was thinking of myself actually as being sort of the romantic lead in a way, but I don't know why I convinced myself that that was the case. So when you see it on screen, and even the dog's kind of growling at you as you walk into a room, you suddenly realise, oh yeah, I'm the bad guy. Of course he doesn't think that of himself at all. He goes to Mansfield, he's obviously terribly bored a lot of the time, because he's just got too much money, essentially. You know, and he begins, he begins, you know, he puts the, the kind of cat amongst the pigeons as much as anything. He locks his eyes on Maria, first of all, and once he's um, pulled her, again, he gets bored. He seems to just be about the next conquest and the next conquest. However, when he, when he meets uh, Billy's character, Fanny, he, he sees something that he's never kind of encountered before, which is someone just so honest, brutally honest with him, in fact. And it's like a breath of fresh air. And I think he begins to change as a result because I think she enables him to see another sort of world, maybe a world of honesty. So in terms of, of his pursuit, I think he genuinely sort of sees a kind of redemptive quality in her. And that's definitely how I played it. I must at long last hold you to my heart. <laughs> now you've maybe mistaken my lines, Mr Crawford. Well, then we must rehearse again until you choose to remember them. Get Mariah in shape, will you, Henry? Otherwise we'll never be ready. My pleasure, sir. So proof, if proof were needed, that Mansfield Park is just a jolly old sex romp and ultimately a story of true love. So when it comes to Jane Austen's writing, what is it Billy Piper likes best? And I suppose it's just her observations that I like so much. You know, the way she observes love and family and, you know, family dynamics and stress and... And, and that's kind of why I really enjoyed the script. It feels like you're spying on this family. It's kind of reminded me of a Woody Allen film, actually. That's the way I kind of tapped into it. Obviously, the language is very different. I think it makes you feel good. It's, it's, she's peaceful and it's passionate and kind, you know, all good things. Unrequited love is big. Uh, you know, I, I, I love Jane Austen, lots of women running around desperately looking for husbands. It's so sweet. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more to that. That's kind of doing it down. Well, certainly, Mansfield Park is a good read. And we'll give the last word on acting in a period drama to Billy Piper and Blake Ritson with a revealing insight into the everyday practicalities of wearing old-fashioned clothes and also how it feels to act in such a sophisticated novel. I love doing period dramas, although the novelty of wearing a corset and, you know, being strapped into dresses wears off in about five hours. I have new techniques of going to the toilet, let me say that. But it's fun. It is great fun. And when you're in the costume and when you're on location, you suddenly feel like you have slipped back in time and it's, you know, you wouldn't normally get to experience that in life. So it's quite special, really. And obviously, just so great to be working on Austin such a privilege you know my nan's very happy about it (laughs) the grandparents are thrilled there's something infinitely kind of satisfying about doing a part which is really complicated that you you have to wrestle with you you can't be lazy um and i think the minute you know you're doing an austin you know the sophistication of the writing is such that you it, it really bears a great amount of kind of research and kind of thinking about and i think there's a lot of screenplays kind of fly under your nose which are rather kind of glib so when you get writing of this sophistication, it's, yeah, it's, re- it's really exciting. It's just, it's a challenge. And, and that's, you know, what, you, what you're after as an actor, really. And we're back with our next download for North Anger Abbey on Tuesday, the 20th of March. ITV drama premieres are sponsored by Sainsbury's. Mansfield Park, starring Billy Piper and Blake Ridson. Sunday, the 18th of March at 9pm on ITV One. As you know, Mr Crawford is soon to leave Mansfield. 